Well, he's had jobs uh, where he has had to rebuild brands. He went to Washington. The year before he got there, they didn't win a football game. He went to USC. Uh, They were beaten down. He went to Texas. They were down. And rebuilding is hard. And these are big brands that have uh, impatient uh, boosters and often uh, executives in the uh, in the in the office in the athletic department. So Steve Sarkeesian now, here we go. Ten of eleven offensive starters return. Do you get a sense, Steve? This is a big year now. You lost close games. Now you don't have a bunch of kids anymore. Do you sense this is you gotta turn those late season L's to W's? Do you sense the pressure? I don't really feel the pressure. I, I feel excited for our team in that um you know, we've got a really good football team. You know, we've got – we're returning a bunch of players. We recruited really well. Uh, we've got good depth across the board. Uh, you know, I was talking to the staff earlier today. We're not a one-dimensional football team. You know, I feel like we can win a high-scoring game. We can win a low-scoring game. If it comes down to special teams, we're really solid there with our specialists. If we need to throw it, we can. If we need to run it, we can. We're, we're, we're just a really well-rounded team that has got a lot of veteran players but also – a really nice influx of, uh, of talented young, young pieces to the, to the team. So uh, here's Arch Manning, and then you already got a quarterback who, I mean, listen, Sark, you, you've had some good quarterbacks. you got a couple of guys that can really sling it. How do you balance it between having a guy that could be a first-round quarterback, having maybe the most prolific high school quarterback ever? How do you balance that? Do you want the young kid to get reps? Do you want him to sit and learn? The Manning name is American football royalty. How do you balance that? Well, I think the first thing is getting them to understand that everybody's at a different phase in the, in their development, right? Um, whether you're talking about Quinn Ewers, Malik Murphy, Arch Manning, all these guys are at a different phase. And what they need to do a really good job is, is not get caught up in what the other guy's working on in his development, but focus on what we're asking them to work on in their development. And then two, be a great teammate. You know, I, I've been part of some really good quarterback rooms over the years. You know, back in the day at SC, I had Carson Palmer, Matt Castle, and Matt Liner in the same room. Uh, I was in a quarterback room with John David Booty and Mark Sanchez in the same room. You know, I was in the quarterback room at Alabama with Tua Tonga Vailoa and Mac Jones in the same room. So I'm not, this isn't just you know foreign territory for me. Um, I think, like I said, the key is focus on what the, each individual needs to work on to be the best player he can be. Uh, and then be a great teammate for the other guys. And we've got a really cool camaraderie amongst this group of guys right now. And uh, looking forward to watching them all play here in a couple of days. Uh, B. John Robinson reminded me a little of, of Ladanian Tomlinson at LSU, where he could block, catch, run. Just there were literally, I called him last year in the draft, a flawless football player. And I know everybody in the world's down on running backs, but he was so dynamic so refined as a college running back. I mean, as good as the Reggie Bushes are, the kid could do everything at a high level. Are you concerned at all? You didn't lose a back. You lost two in the draft, by the way, and one of them is one of the best running backs in a decade. How do you replace that? Well, that's going to be one of the, the, the key question marks going into training camp. You know, of all the, you know, the 10 starters coming back for us, the one that we don't is Bijan and, and at that running back position. And then we also lost Roshan Johnson, yep. you know, a third round pick in, at that spot. So uh, we've got a talented room. It's not going to be about the ability, you know, whether it's a Jonathan Brooks, a Keelan Robinson, a Cedric Baxter, a Jaden Blue, a, a Trey Wisner, a Savion Red. These, these guys are all talented players. It's who – gives us the best opportunity to have success offensively. And uh, is it one of them? Is it two of them? Is it possibly three of them? That, that's what we have to find out. And that if there's anything, that's one of the, the best question marks come, going into training camp, but one that I think we'll feel really comfortable with coming out of training camp when we get it answered. Washington, USC, and Texas are big brands. They've all got national championships. Washington won in the early 90s, as you know. Very proud program. SC and Texas are two of the top five names is, but it always feels, and I've said this before, is I don't know why this is, but I've always loved Texas as a program. The colors, it's so big, it's, and it's, it's glamorous. It's, USC's got this. It's a glamour brand. There's a lot of good football brands. Are there similar similarities to USC where um, Texas football is, is, it's college, but there's like a pro vibe, a big city vibe to it. Uh, I, I've never been around it. You know, you're my link to it. Explain Texas football compared to – you've been at Bama. 
You've been at Texas, USC, Washington. Is it different at Texas? Well, first of all, we got to get you down here to a game, Colin. I mean, it is. I don't know if you've have you ever been to Austin. Yes. Oh no, I've been to Austin several times. I've been to one Longhorn game years and years ago, but. There is something about the program that feels, I've said this, there's three, two or three glamour brands, Notre Dame, USC, Texas. It feels different than even Alabama. Well, first of all, I think, A, the history and tradition speak for itself. And you're right about the colors and the uniform. They're, they're very unique that way. Um, the city of Austin is on fire. Uh, and, and with all that and, and the growth that Austin has, we, you know, the only pro sport we have is Austin FC. And so when you talk about being in the state of Texas, uh, being in Austin, Texas, the capital of the state, um, we are that program. And inevitably, um, we, we've got a brand that is that is world renowned. It's in my opinion, it's a number one logo in sports. You, know, you look on my shirt. It doesn't say Longhorns. It doesn't say Texas. There's just the picture of the Longhorn and everybody knows what it is. Uh, so in the end, it is like like those other schools. I, th I think it's very similar that way. I think we can recruit great players. Um, I can remember being on the sidelines in that national championship game you know, with USC thinking, man, Texas has players that look like ours. <laughs> they, they're as fast as ours. They're, they, they, they're as big as ours are. And, and we have won 33 straight games in a row. And inevitably, you know, Vince got us that night in, in arguably the, the greatest college football game ever. So uh, it is a tremendous brand. We're, we're, we're extremely fortunate. And um, it's one that I know we take a lot of pride in. You know, I was talking earlier about, you know, I, you know every day I walk into this building with a, with a real sense of humility. And I'm humble the fact that, man, I get to be the head coach of the University of Texas. And I don't take it lightly. And uh, we're fortunate to have a really good football team this year. And um, we'll see how far we can take it. All five of your losses were one possession games. Now, some of that I'd give you a pass on because you were young. I mean, you were starting two freshmen on the offensive line. You had kids everywhere. But now I think there's a burden, Steve, to, okay, now you got to win these close games. When you look at last year, you go over the game film. Are there things in those close games that you look at now and go, oh, yeah, yeah we're going to be better at that. Oh, I can't believe we did that. That is just simply maturity. Guys are 19, not 18, 20, not 19. No question. You know, I think when you really break down football and, and you start looking at the special situations within the game, you look at third down, you look at fourth down now, which has become such a, a you know, just a change in ph philosophy wise of, of what's going on. You, you look at what we were able to, or inability to kind of score in the red area. Uh, that, that Alabama game, we were in the red area five times and scored one touchdown. You know, what a difference that that game could have been if we could have punched it in a couple different times. You know, how we control the ball in the fourth quarter to close out some of those games that we had leads in. Uh, but inevitably, I, I don't look at it as a burden. I look at it as an unbelievable opportunity. You know, what's going to happen when we do? Uh, and that, that to me, is something that I think uh, our players have embraced, our coaching staff has embraced, and we're looking forward to the opportunity because we, we've got a hardworking football team. We've got great coaches. We've got really good continuity amongst our staff. We're returning a lot of really good players, but this this influx of, of young players as well provides depth to where you know guys aren't having to play every snap for three quarters and, and, they're, and they're just trying to make it in the fourth. We're going to be able to rotate some guys and keep people fresh into the fourth quarter of these games. Yeah, you're very, very deep at quarterback, wide receiver, um, and that's your specialty. The game has changed. I mean, I watched Tennessee roll. I watched you guys in Tennessee go up and down the field on Bama. Um, can you win on the defensive side? Now, Georgia has done it, but they've also had really good quarterback play with Stetson Bennett. That helps a lot. Do you, do you ever think to yourself as an offensive coach, uh, do you celebrate as hard when you get a corner in recruiting as you do a receiver? Or does it feel like it's just hard to win defensively these days? No, I think you have to have defense. At the end of the day, you have to, and you you just start going through it. I mean, I think that you know, even the year um, LSU wins it with, with Joe with, with Burrow, they weren't great on defense, especially earlier in the year. But as the season went on, they started playing better and better defense uh, as that year went on. You, you still have to play great defense, and I think also you have to be an opportunistic defense. You got to find ways to create turnovers. You got to find ways to get stops in the red area and, and force field goals. Then you got to find a way to get stops on fourth down because not anymore in college football do you defend three downs. You got to defend four. 
Uh, and, and you never know when teams are going to go for it anymore. I mean, Lane, I think, has partially changed the game here at Ole Miss. The book, as he refers to it as, always seems to say, go for it. Uh, so I'm not sure what book he's got. But um, at, the, <laughs> at the end of it all, um, you know, I, I think you, you still have to play defense. you got to get stops. you got to create turnovers. Uh, and you got to be able to affect the quarterback because everybody's throwing the ball around. you you got to find a way to, to affect the quarterback to, to create some errant throws and turnovers and whatnot. Okay, finally, I, 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 listen, I, there's a, it's going to be a great quarterback class. Quinn Ewers is interesting. At times he does something that can get me uh, frustrated. He's got a little bit of Jay Cutler where he can be a little bit casual sometimes. He's got a huge arm. He's obviously super talented. How do you – you know, because some guys – um, it's loose. You can't be loose in pro football. You could probably be a little loose in high school or college, but you get to the pros, that loose is an interception. What are you doing now? What's the evolution of Brock Ewers to tighten his game up? I know he talked about diet, which I thought was actually interesting because I think he's a first-round talent, but I need to see consistent, consistency. How do you clean that up? Well, I think that's all of it, right? That's all part of the process. you got to remember his – freshman year of college he basically graduated high school early and went to Ohio State uh, and then we got him in January so we we kind of felt like last year was his freshman year with us and there were some great moments there was a few great games in there where, where he just played lights out and then there were some growing pains and, and that's part of playing the position you know ideally I would have loved for him to be able to sit and watch somebody and learn and, and watch their mistakes and learn from those teachable moments but in the end he got some invaluable experience I did think he he saw the value of of changing his his body. Uh, you could see the maturity in him as he continues to grow. But inevitably, some of that looseness comes from maybe you just didn't quite know, right? And you know, you, you try to give him all the different looks in practice, and then you get something in game. It's okay. Yeah. Now where do I go with this ball, and what do I do? So uh, the, the the repetition matters. Um, I think the, the the expertise in the system matters, and historically for us. Guys going into year two in our system, which we're running an NFL offense. Yep. It's the same stuff we did in Atlanta with Matt Ryan and Julio Jones and those guys. Uh, historically, going into year two, uh, that's when we really see that step. And uh, all signs are pointing to that's, that's where Quinn's going this year for us. I can't wait. Cannot wait. Who do, who do you guys open? I don't have your schedule in front of me. Who do you open with? We open with Rice. At oh. Home. oh, boy. Then it's Alabama. That's no, Oh, boy. Okay, listen, I want a couple trick plays against Saban. I like to see Nick get uncomfortable. Put a little razzle in that dazzle, Steve, because last year you had him, <laughs> you had him beat last year, and I don't think I'm alone. When the country was waiting for you to pull it off, and Bryce Young did what Bryce Young does. So it's at Bama. You've got some landmines there, but uh, how do you not – do you ever talk to – will you talk to Nick the week before you play him? Will you, will you call him? Will you talk to him? Probably not the week of, you know, maybe right before the season, I'll give him a call, but maybe not the week of, but, uh, <laughs> hey, you, you know, I've got the utmost respect for him. Of course. You know, he, uh, you know, yeah, I, I can't say it enough what he did for my career. Uh, we had some special moments, uh, and, and that's, you know, I, I learned this from Pete a long time ago at SC. There's nothing better than competing against your friends and the people you respect the most. And so, um, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll put forth a, a great week of preparation. We'll have a good plan and, I have no question our, our guys are going to go out and play hard. We just got we got to play we got to play well enough to win. September 9th, that is going to be one for the ages. Texas loaded in Alabama. Cannot wait. Sark, always root for you. Great seeing you. You look so good with that color. You look, look it just fits really really nice. I appreciate nice. that. Thank you. <laughs> it's great seeing you. Throw my horns up. Yeah, yeah there you just, go. Yeah, we're, we're all right here, man. All right. Great seeing you. Steve Sarkeesian, a friend. He's been uh Doing it, smart guy, been doing it for a long time. And that is one of it. I don't know why this is. I didn't grow up around it. I've always loved Texas football. Hi, everybody. Thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get the latest from the show. Also, be sure to check out more of the best clips from The Herd or go watch a few segments from other shows on FS1.